is Ohio nursing home abuse lawyer, Will Eady. I'm here to talk about five ways to handle holiday nursing home understaffing. And what do I mean by that? Well, in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, understaffing uh, is when there's not enough nurses and aides to provide timely and adequate care to residents. And we know that this can have a direct impact on patient care from UTIs and bed sores when people aren't kept clean and dry to falls when residents require a two-person assist and they don't have enough staff to provide that and one person tries to do it themselves. So we already know understaffing is a problem in these settings, but holidays present a special challenge because particularly in the winter holidays, there's a lot of people taking their holiday time. Sometimes they have to take it by end of year. Sometimes um, they get presents or they need to do shopping or they get early tax incentives or refunds. And what we see over that course of time is a lot of understaffing, uh, significant understaffing, which can be fixed either by uh, better staffing levels in nursing homes, which unfortunately we don't see very often, or they can bring in agency staff, that's temporary workers who may not know your loved one, the systems at the nursing home, they just might not be able to handle on a one-to-one -one basis the same types of care that otherwise those um, traditional staff would be able to handle. So it's a particularly dangerous time. And I wanna give you five ways to try to deal with that yourself. You're not gonna be able to change the nursing home staffing levels. There's gonna be limits on what you can do as a loved one. So here are five ideas. And if you have other ideas, if you've experienced this yourself, if you have comments or feedback, please at the end of the video, take a second to go down in the comments or like and share, but also leave your feedback in those comments because it really does help to hear from other people who've gone through this. So number one is to plan for it, okay? So assume there's gonna be fewer staff members to care for your loved one during that time. So take what steps you can, take that basic understanding and belief and move forward from there. And that takes us to number two is to make a schedule. So think about the uh, times that people will be able to visit and try to spread out those visits, whether it's just you or you and other loved ones over the course of the holidays. So instead of saying, you know, we're gonna do one Christmas visit, big visit with a lot of people, which sounds wonderful and that's a great thing to do, you can try to schedule it out. So maybe there's a, a visit with everybody, but that is part of the understanding is, yeah, but then who's gonna be there the next day and the next day and the next day. And that can be challenging in the holidays, I, I get that. It, you got a lot of other things going on, but by trying to space it out, talking with loved ones ahead of time about these risks, you'll really be able to do a better job keeping track. And there won't be this you know, weak period of no contact where you come back, like some of the families we've had as clients and you're shocked to see what happens. That's It's normal, that's a normal approach to the holidays, but that's when you assume there's gonna be people there to care for your loved ones, which unfortunately is not always the case. Number three, get specific about the risks that your loved one faces. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, your loved one may be susceptible to urinary tract uh, infections. Your loved one may be particularly susceptible to bed sores or skin breakdowns or falls. Maybe there's somebody who, who gets up and tries to toilet themselves if there isn't help there, if they don't have a toileting program, things like that. So to the extent you can know that, uh, try to plan around that. So for example, some people, if it's eating and drinking that's problematic, having short visits early and late in the day are a great way to make sure they've been eating, help feed them, bring some food, help make sure they're drinking water, uh, check with staff, check with dietary, keep them on their toes, let them know that people are in there checking on them. So that can address a specific risk, whereas somebody who needs help, say repositioning, uh, avoiding skin breakdowns, if they're able to get up, that might be a better approach is to spend a little more time with them, but get them out of bed, get them dressed, get them changed, get the staff to help you with that and make sure that they're up and moving about so that uh, they, they don't develop those bed sores or skin breakdowns. So take some time and think through what are the risks and what are the best ways we can allocate our limited time and energy to help with that. Uh, number four, don't trust immediate answers you get over the phone. So one way to try and uh, spread out or help over this, this time with understaffing is to make phone calls to the facility. It's, it's not a bad idea to do that, but what I see too often is you call up, you say, hey, I'm calling about you know my dad, John Smith, and I wanna make sure that he's eating well. How's he eating? And the person who picks up the phone just tells you, oh, John's doing great. You can't assume the person picking up the phone has any idea what's going on. 
they may be trained to just kind of get people off the phone or that might be their nature is just to say nice things. So how do you account for that? Number one, just don't trust that. But also think about asking for specific people, asking someone to check the chart, asking someone uh, to go in so you can talk to a loved one if they're cognitively able to do that and really check in with them. So if you, if you are taking the approach of using the phone contact to do that, Again, don't just accept whatever that quick answer is. It's easy to do that and to think, oh, well, gee, I want to trust me. You know, it was a nurse or a nurse practitioner who picked up. They may know nothing. So dig in a little bit deeper. And finally, number five is talk to trusted staff. You know, here at ED Hill Travelers, we sue nursing homes. We sue assisted living facilities. We don't make enemies out of the staff, even though it's often a staff members involved in an injury or lack of staffing is involved in an injury or both. We don't make enemies out of nursing staff. People don't go to nursing school. They don't uh, become nursing aides. They don't work in nursing homes, which is tough, okay? Not well paid, unfortunately, uh, because they want to hurt people or because they don't love people. They do it because they want to help. And they might not be able to do that at the end of the day because of those corporate decisions, greed and understaffing and things like that, but they want to help. So as you get to know people who are there longer, not quick turnover, uh, you get to know them by name. You know that they care. Those are the kinds of people that you can talk to about this holiday period. So you can do that when you're visiting in advance. You can say, you know, Gina or Joe, I'm really worried about how my dad's going to do with eating and drinking over the holidays when you might not have as many people here. Or the facility won't have as many people. There might be agency, temporary staff. You know, what are your ideas for how we can make sure that happens? Or can I ask you to make sure that you're you're checking when you're on shift? Or here's my cell phone number. Call me anytime. You can also try to rely on them over the course of the holidays. So again, if you have to go back to checking by phone, which is better than nothing, if you can't make it out there on a particular day, which is understandable, you can say, hey, is Gina there? Is Steve there? And know when they work, know what their shifts are, ask for them during convenient times for them, and say, hey, how's 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 my dad doing? How's how's he eating? Can I call you back? What's a good time to call you back today when you've had a chance to to check in on them? And you can rely on those trusted staff because you know them and you know they're they're going to be helpful. So those are five, you know, quick tips for ways to handle holiday understaffing in nursing home and assisted living. Please, please take a second if you have any of your own experiences, share them in the comments. Share this video if you think it'll be helpful. It, it can only help other people to learn from your experience. So this is Ohio Nursing Home Abuse Lawyer, Will Eady, hoping everyone stays healthy in a nursing home.